Hi, so with the news that Blizzard are going to be formally supporting legacy servers, vanilla servers in whatever format, we don't know the details yet. It's really great news for obviously the lot of people who especially want to play those servers but don't want to play World of Warcraft, the modern version, but also equally great for the people who want to play the older version and the newer version. The thing I've always said about an online game, the great problem with it is when you bought a more traditional game that had a physical copy to it, you bought a CD and you have that forever. So Baldur's Gate, which is another great love of mine, a game I return to every couple of years, you know, I have a physical copy of that. As long as I've got a computer with an operating system that can play it, I can play that whenever I like. The company can go under it. doesn't matter. I've got that game. The same is not true of an online game. You're playing it on the company's servers. When they discontinue it, you can't play it anymore. Uh, when they change it, you can't play the things that were changed away from anymore. And, and that's always really disappointing. There are certainly things that have changed in the game World of Warcraft now that, that I miss. And... I remember when my channel was quite young, one of the series I did was you know, playing my Paladin through the different expansions, what the experience was like. Um, and the first time I used a device that I'm going to use for this one as well. So, and also my all, attitude has always been with the, the vanilla servers is I very much understand the reason why people want them to be a thing because it's something you cannot access. Blizzard are not allowing us to access it to it. But it was not the sort of thing I would prepare to do myself because I do respect the fact that it is Blizzard's copyright material, so I would never play on a private server. Um, so I'm just delighted that, that you know everything uh, is going to be fine now. Well, we hope so anyway. We hope so. There are some things, obviously, that each of us would like about the vanilla servers, and maybe some of them would, would be there and some of them would not. In fact, I was joking that, you know, uh, they said they're not going to put bug. F they're going to put bug fixes and stuff like that. And they don't want bugs in the game. They don't want crashes in the game, which is fair enough. Um, but it's not really a vanilla. It's not really the true vanilla expansion feeling. Um, if your seal of command doesn't occasionally fail and you have to use a lower ranked one, or you you don't keep falling into the Ironforge lag pit, or on patch days um, you can't play the game, so you have to go into the realm forums and discuss things there. But what I've got here. Uh, in terms of the game as it's evolved, and obviously I, I like a lot of the improvements that have been made to World of Warcraft. I still play World of Warcraft. I play a lot. And so, yeah, I love the retail version of World of Warcraft, the modern version of World of Warcraft, Legion at the moment. Uh, but there are still things that I miss. Sometimes I think when you make changes, even when they're good changes, you can sometimes throw out the baby with the bathwater. So I'm going to go through here the top 10 things that I miss from Vanilla WoW. And in order to remember them, I'm going to put on the old rose tinted glasses. So the first one is the something that really doesn't happen very much these days and it's certainly not expected. At the end of every dungeon if you had a mage with you or at the end of every raid you would expect a mage to put a portal out and they actually needed reagents then as well. You'd sometimes get the thing oh sorry I haven't got the reagent for that. You would not be happy. Getting around was not easy. You had a hearthstone on a much longer cooldown than it is now, and that's all you would have, that one hearthstone, which was set to wherever it was set to. Um, and that was it for getting around, uh, certainly from the end of a dungeon. You also didn't fancy tramping back. Most dungeons, as they are now, uh, there isn't a quick exit from them. Occasionally there are, but usually there isn't. So you've got to tramp all the way through the dungeon. And then when you get out there, there's you know you're in the middle of nowhere. So getting back from there, not very fun. Um, and you wouldn't necessarily want to use your hearthstone because you had to use that sparingly. So yeah, you'd absolutely expect a mage to do that there. Uh, second thing I would say is conjured items. Conjured items played a much bigger part. Warlock health stones. We have warlock health stones now. Sometimes, at the, like at the moment, they're better than health pots. So yeah, we definitely want them. Sometimes they're not as good. Uh, so we'd expect to use health potions instead. At the time, it was an extra thing, and you had to trade the Warlock directly to get them. And it was only one. It wasn't like multiple charges. In theory, you could use them several times in a fight, because although it had a cooldown, the cooldown would carry on even in combat. It wasn't one of those where it was suspended in combat. Um, and in fact, in raids, you could sometimes get yourself several health stones. But in order to do that, you would require to have at least one Warlock in your raid that had no talents in health stones, 
someone who had one talent in it and someone who had two in improved healthstone and that way they were all three different types of healthstone so you could have them because like many conjured items they were sort of unique there um and it didn't end at that majors who conjure the food now how many times do we see people asking majors to put a table down every now and then we do but it is much less common at the time everyone wanted everyone wanted either food or water or potentially both your health and mana did not regen even out of combat at a very fast rate so you would often have people munching on that. I mean, you'd see rogues eating food between pulls to get their health back, whether solo in or in groups or something like that. Uh, and the same with everyone else. And I don't actually remember when the mage table came in. It may have been towards the end of vanilla. It may not have been till TBT. But certainly for most of vanilla that I can remember, you had to actually trade the mage as well. And it involved conjuring an awful lot of these things at once and it was not a quick thing they had to carry out an awful lot of cast and then they'd have to do this at the start of the raids making all the having plenty of space in their bags for a start i'd have had no chance uh and making all the food and water and then they'd occasionally have to drink some of their own water to get it back there was a quest you had to do to get the good water once you get to level cap and uh, and then you'd have to get people to trade you, the 40 people in the raid, you couldn't hold enough for all of those people, get people to trade you, then make more. Uh, and it was a very lengthy process there. But again, it was a nice little social experience at the start of the raid as well. The next thing were epics were not easy to acquire. No. It's not like now where you get to level cap and you are festooned in epics almost immediately. Epics are dropping in, dun in dungeons or raids, and uh, dungeons and dungeons for goodness sake, and in raids, and it's like, mm, don't even want it. Even in the first week of raiding, you can have some epics that's like, no one wants it. Um, but yeah, to begin with, it was it was actually a very long time before I was even in full blues, and epics came at a very, very slow rate. In fact, I was raiding for months before I ever got into full epics. And, and, and actually, I'm not sure that I ever really did because there were a couple of very good blues. It was, it was not so much the fact that they were actually very stunning blues, but they didn't actually always make epic items for every sort of role and, and armor type. I remember in particular using blue male intellect braces from Scholomance uh, rather than any epic plate ones because... They weren't terribly good um, for, for healing, for, for Holy Paladin. But, but that was by choice. I could have had epic plate braces. But even in terms of getting the pieces for which I wanted the, the epics there, it, was, it took a very long time. You were talking months and months before you could get a decent amount of epics. When you were out in the world, especially when leveling as well, because quests, I mean, this is something that's changed with Legion, really, this idea of, of going out in the world and doing quests at level cap. This is really mostly for leveling. It always has been, although there were a lot of very good quests attached to dungeons that you would still do at level cap. But what you would often find is, although you would spend a lot of time solo, unless you were playing with a friend, there were always quests, and especially quest chains would generally culminate in either a dungeon quest which of course you'd have to find a group for but sometimes even if it was out in the world there'd be elite areas and that might be attached to the end of a quest chain for which you'd get a good reward a blue quality reward and those elites there you know as you can guess were probably intended for groups now if you're a particularly tough class like paladins for example i mean i could kill elites it would take a long time it took a long time to kill anything um but I had enough survivability that I could do that. As long as I didn't pull too many, that was always a fear. And in fact, areas of, of mobs were quite sensibly designed. You would, in an area where you maybe need to kill so many of a mob, you would notice there'd be some that'd go round in ones, maybe twos in a patrol. And then you'd have groups of them as well. You could sort of see what that was about. If you were in a group yourself, then you could get the quest done much more quickly by attacking the, the camp of them. But as a solo player, you would get mugged. You couldn't do that. So you had to wait around and pull the patrols to you. And you wouldn't rush to them as well because it might intersect with the patrol of another one. You didn't want to pull too many at once. So you'd find a safe area. You'd scout the area out. You wouldn't just go charging headlong in. You'd scout an area out and then you'd pull it back to you, kill it, and then try and find another one in this patrol area. Um, or you'd see someone in the area join up with a group. If there was a few of you together, then maybe take on 
the larger groups and again get it done a bit more quickly so that incentive to group up with complete strangers was more there and some people talk about the social aspect of vanilla um, some of them i think they overplay it a little bit but this is one aspect where it potentially was uh, quite a social aspect that certainly did seem to take place the other thing about Quest and the thing I really love, and, and to be fair, this is only something you can get, I think, in the first form of a game when there are far more levels and there are far more zones. It's not terribly realistic to expect this of an expansion where you know there's only so many extra zones, there's only so many extra levels you can get. But what I definitely miss was getting quests that would just send you out to the far-flung corners of Azeroth. Um, you know, you would... You know, very early on, I I, went, I must have gone into and quested in, actively quested, not just passing through, but actively quested in eight different zones by the time I was level 30. You know, I went all over the place because, you know, you'd go somewhere and someone would send you up to wetlands. You'd, there was an elf outside the alchemy placed in Stormwind or near there that would send you off to um, Stone Talon Mountains and Thousand Needles. Um... I was a long while that was a different continent. You know, and you're looking at the map in your manual, trying to work out how you're going to get there. You'd be going through zones where the mobs had skulls where their level should be. Uh, so you'd stick very closely to the path there. Some paths in some zones had elites that would wander around them. You know, the Scarlet Courier, for example, in uh, Eastern Plaguelands, you'd have to be very, very wary of. There was another elite patrol round uh, Arathi Highlands, Hillsbrad area. I forget. It might have been the intersection between the two uh so sometimes the path wasn't all that safe as well so you couldn't you couldn't really go afk somewhere like you can now you just fly don't you? you just go up into the air way into the air uh and you can just go afk there it was very dicey going afk at the time even on a pve server um just because some paths were not safe uh, and then i remember my favorite zone of all duskwood with the St stitches quest line that was a great quest line, but also it meant someone else doing it could could some of the, you know there'd be an abomination wandering down the main path, so that wasn't a safe place to go either. Um, so yeah, so quest hubs, I mean, they did exist then. The idea that we have now, which you go to an area, you pick up all the quests, go out and murder everything that moves, and wait till it's all complete, and then go back. Um, it's not that they didn't exist; they did exist. They had those as well. It's just that that was one way of getting and finishing quests it wasn't the only system there was there were quests as i say that would just you know for, for just one quest that would just send you miles away go over there uh not breadcrumb quests to send you to the next place because that's all you have now you go to a hub you get all the quests you do them and then you get another quest a breadcrumb quest that sends you to the next hub to go and you do them all there and, and keep moving around like that um it was it was there was more explanate exploration about it and that's definitely something I miss. But as I say, I don't, you know, attack the changes to World of Warcraft. I think that's something that in an expansion in general is much more difficult to get uh, with the limited number of zones. And, and you know, maybe with um, more scaling in zones, maybe that's something that could be brought back at some point. The other thing is when it came to finding groups, particularly for dungeons, obviously for dungeons you're going to need to find a group. Now, if you're in a guild, you might well be able to find people in the guild to go with you. That occasionally would happen. Even then it could take a while. I was certainly never in a guild where it was a quick thing. But I mean, you know, I can only speak from my own experiences. But certainly before I got into any sort of suitable guild, which I never did when I was leveling up, so finding a dungeon group or getting involved in a dungeon group. The quickest one I ever found, actually, is when I was doing my level 20. I was above level 20 by the time I got to this bit. Paladin quest. And I found myself in Ashenvale. Trying to find Black Fathom Deeps. It didn't appear to be where it was marked on the map in the manual. Uh, so I needed to go there to, to complete that quest. And just so happened there were four people asking in chat there for a fifth to join them for that dungeon turns out i didn't actually need to go to the dungeon at all i could have just gone to the outside of it but nonetheless that you know that was the quickest way i ever got into a dungeon usually you're waiting around for a bit certainly if you got in on the ground floor if you started the dungeon group yourself it could easily take a long time and most likely you'd go to iron forge go to trade chat and try to form the group there and then head out 
and it could take a very long time. It could take up to an hour to get the group together. And you knew, people sort of knew that it was going to take a long time. It was going to take a long time to do the dungeon. Um, but Because that is the only tool you had for getting that group together. There was no, even the rudimentary LFD came in Burning Crusade. So you just had the chat, the global chat, uh, to form, to find groups. And I say global, it wasn't truly global either. So you were very severely limited um, in that regard. And, and as a result, the, the emphasis to join a guild of people with common interests was much greater. So the cesspool guilds you didn't really hear about at the time because it was in your interest if you wanted a more efficient experience to join with people who wanted the same thing out of the game as you did so that you could get groups via the guild there. Um, now, personally, for me personally, I mean, I'm always into my professions as I level up in any MMO. I like my professions. And the ones I went for, even as a paladin, were I, I, my eye was on enchanting. I loved the idea of enchanting. And um, so I took with it tailoring. It seemed straightforward enough. It might seem strange, a paladin been a tailor, but it was pretty good, uh, not just for the bags. The fact that you you could get your own materials without a gathering trade, because the cloth you just you got as normal. Make things with it that you could then disenchant, so it feeds into the enchanting. But nonetheless, I wouldn't have hoped to have got all the materials I wanted to keep my enchanting up at the same level as my character. So to fund the purchase of other enchanting materials, I had to sell enchants, and that meant being in Ironforge in trade chat, advertising the various enchants I could do and my prices. Because you couldn't just put them on a vellum and put them on the auction house. You had to enchant in person. That was the only way to do it at the time, which meant if you wanted to sell enchanting, uh, you had to be there in Ironforge. I mean, I suppose it would be Undercity, most likely, or Orgrimmar uh, as Horde. But certainly as Alliance, Ironforge was the place to be. Not only was it fairly central, not only was it as a, a good city, a good layout, but it, it had the auction house. Before they had auction houses in various cities, Ironforge for Alliance was where it was. Uh, so you'd even though you couldn't use it yourself for the enchanting, you could that's where people would naturally congregate for trade. Um the other thing is dungeons, going back to dungeons. At level cap, they were actually really, really difficult. Like, when you first got to level cap, and not really knowing how to play the game, if we're honest, you got a group together of people around about your level, uh, because you'd be quest, the quest for those dungeons, you would get them. And you'd go into those dungeons, you would just get mullered, absolutely blattered. You, they were too hard, <laughs> they were too difficult for people who didn't really know what they were doing, and for people in lower level gear, or poor quality gear, no chance, right? Was that a barrier? Not at all, because you could raid dungeons. You would get 10-man raids to the likes of Strathome and Scholomance and Blackrock Depths. Um, you could actually 15-man lower Blackrock Spire because that was part of the same instance as upper Blackrock Spire, which was 15-man. But the point, I mean, generally 10-man, uh, but the point is you these high-level dungeons you could do as 10-man just to get gear, and that's what people would do them for. You couldn't do the quests in them because you were in a raid group. But you would go there, get yourself geared up. Once you were geared up, then you could do them as five man and uh, and do the quests and get the other items from those quests, which was still good even if you have, after you'd geared up uh, with some of the items that drop in those instances as well. So there was a long progression arc with just doing dungeons. Doing dungeons wasn't just something you did for the first couple of weeks of an expansion until you got yourself into your raids. Admittedly, Legion's come a little bit of a way with that one now with the Mythic Plus dungeon system. But there was an actual progression arc. You would do dungeons before you did raids, but it would take you a long time to gear up in dungeons as a result of that. Speaking of dungeons, uh, to access some parts of dungeons, or even to access dungeons at all, you would sometimes need keys for which you had to do a quest. So, for example, you couldn't attack the Scarlet side of Strathome until you had uh, a Scarlet key, which you got from one of the Scarlet Monastery you know, dungeons, the, the library, uh, which you had to do there. Um, East Diamond East required the Crescent key, and you got that from, let's get this right now, Diamond West, I believe, by following the little imp uh, that you chase around, which you can still get now. 
um, but you don't need that to get into that instance anymore. So there were keys you needed. You need eventually they brought in the key ring uh, because there were so many keys to access different things um, that it became a bit on your bags were just getting jammed with it. Or more likely, what people would do was leave the keys in their bank. You'd get to the dungeon. Remember, it took a long time to get a dungeon group together. Then you had to get to the dungeon. Some of those dungeon travels were horrendous. For example, I particularly remember round about level 30 doing Scarlet Monastery. So the way you did that as Alliance, because Horde area, not so bad. You just get two four glades, away you go. As Alliance, what you had to do was get yourself through Hillsbrad, go up towards Chillwind Camp in Western Plague Lands. And that was as close as you could get to it via a flight point. And then you'd have to go north. There'd be a lake. You'd swim across the lake, get to the other side. As soon as you're on the other side, it's very dicey. First of all, there's bears, way higher item level, uh, item level, way higher level than you. You'd have to be very careful about those. Um, not easy to get away from those if you aggro them. And of course, they'd have quite a large aggro range, so you have to be quite careful. Then the border between Western Plague Lands and Tyrus Four Glades was a horde PvP area. So it had horde NPCs, again, much higher item level than. Uh, item level much higher level than you so you'd have to negotiate that hope that you didn't get pvp flags and if you did that there were any horde players about and then make your way to scarlet monastery um and again even when you got to scarlet monastery you'd still have to kill the mobs to get through now they were they were fine they weren't low to higher level than you you could kill those but nonetheless it was an amount of time to actually do that so you can sort of see the travel time required to get some places and that wasn't even the worst. I mean, probably the worst in terms of length. If you were, remember, in Ironforge, getting this group together would be somewhere like Diamore. Because then you'd have to get the boat to Theramore. Then you'd have to go through, so you'd have to make your way down to Feralus. Um, and all the way through. And it was good. I particularly remember going through like a Tauran village because it was just the quickest way to get there when you were near a level cap. Before then, you would have to just go all the long way around. Uh, not not easy to get around the terrain in some of those zones at all. So, yeah, so you had you had keys that you need to get for dungeons. You had attunements for raids. So Upper Blackrock Spire, you only needed one person in the in the raid to have uh, the key, which is in the form of a necklace, the uh, Drake Fire Emlet, I think it was called. Still have it somewhere. Um, no, it was the Seal of Ascension, wasn't it? Drake Fire Amulet was in Nixie's lair. Seal of Ascension. So that was a quest that you had to do in Lower Blackrock Spire. But you wouldn't expect to be able to do it in one go because you needed drops from bosses. And, you know, when those drops occurred from bosses, there'd be other people in the group, which, remember, would most likely be a raid that would also want them. Um, so you'd have to, you know, go. you'd have to do that run quite a lot of times to be able to get it. And then you'd eventually get that, and um, that would give you access to Upper Blackrock Spire. Upper Blackrock Spire, the final boss of that was needed to get attunement to Blackwing Lair. You needed to do Blackrock Depths to get attunement to Molten Core. Uh, in the case of Blackwing Lair and Molten Core, it was possible to get in there without attunement because there were physical instance entrances in Blackrock Depths and uh, Upper Blackrock Spire. But, of course, you wanted to teleport straight in there, not do a bloody dungeon to get in. Um, Anchorage, there wasn't really anything. It was a server-wide achievement for that before it opened. You didn't have to do anything personally. Uh, and then Naxxramas was a quest you could, uh, if you had Exalted with Argent Dawn, which I did because I used to run Strathome and Scholomance all the time. So I was Exalted with Argent, Argent Dawn, so I got my achievement for that for free. Otherwise, you'd have to turn in, you know, some items, including Righteous Orbs, Righteous Orbs, which I think do still drop on the Scarlet side of Strathome were highly prized, uh, the number of things you could make with those, including the famed uh, you know, Crusader enchant, it's very popular, also the Arcanite champion, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, the idea that you had to do attunements uh, for these quests. And the Anixia's Lair one, I mean, for, for Alliance, that was a long old quest chain. Um, and I gather it was much worse. It was actually enjoyable, I have to say, for Alliance. It was enjoyable. For Horde, I gather, I can't speak from experience, that it was actually a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but I can't really say what was involved in that. But it was a long quest chain involving a lot of Blackrock Depths for the early part of Blackrock Depths um, for that. But yeah, so, but you know, you did tend to do a lot of Blackrock Depths because you were farming 
the various gear like fire resist braces from Incendius. And also it was a place to go to get the items needed for the Arcana, which were special enchants you could get from the people in Diamond, like the elf, night elf ghosts um, for enchanting. Let me get this right. Legs and helms, I think. Um, so, you know, there was, a, there was a lot more reason to run dungeons a lot more times and go out and, and, into the world and gather reagents for things as well. I think it's fair to say. And then I think the final thing that I miss the most uh, about it from a social point of view is the 40-man raiding. I understand why we don't have 40-man raiding. There's a number of reasons I suppose it could be argued. But what was really nice about 40-man raiding is, unlike with 20-man mythic raiding, you could definitely carry people. And you did. It was a nice social experience. There was a, there'd be a few people in your raid that, you know what, they were useless. You know, I remember a guy, a hunter... Uh, on Nefarian, Nefarian had an ability in, in Blackwing Lair um, where he would do class calls and he'd call out your class and he would do a thing to that class. And what he would do to hunters, he would break their weapon, after which you couldn't use it. So what hunters had to do when the class call went out for hunters, and we'd all be calling it as well, we didn't expect them to sort of pay attention to their chat or what Nefarian was saying. Everyone, you know, people would call it out across TeamSpeak. Is they got themselves a vendor bought crap bow or something, and they would swap that in, uh, and it would break that instead, and then they'd swap back to their proper one. And we had this one hunter, and even though you'd call it out, you'd even call him out by name. I'm not going to say the name. Uh, Lord, I don't think he plays anymore. And uh, you know, you change your weapon, hunters change your weapon, hunters and blah change your weapon. And he never did. I don't think he ever managed it. All you would hear was, I've done it again. <laughs> oh, God, he's broken his bow. <laughs> he can't do anything. I mean, he could equip the vendor port one and do next to no damage or just not anything, do no damage at all. But it was, but it was funny. Nowadays, you can imagine that. And it's like, well, we're not killing this boss, are we? It's not funny at all. No one finds it funny when that sort of stuff goes down. But when you've got someone you like having around, it's a good lad or, or lass, and you know it's enjoyable, it's a nice social experience, the fact that you've got 10 people in your raid, maybe even 15, that are utterly hopeless, doesn't actually matter, because you just don't give them any important jobs. You make you stand in that corner and press that button, and don't, don't, don't move out of it. Um, you know, there's a couple of fights, okay, where if you get the bomb or something on Geddon, or Velastris or you know, burning adrenaline, then that's problematic if they don't actually shift themselves. But you could always just isolate them in the first place, just say, right, you're standing over there well away from anyone else for the whole fight, uh, if it had to come to that. And you would still make progress. You would still kill Nefarian before Anchorage opened. You would still kill Cthune before Naxxramas opened, all the rest of it. Maybe not kill Kel'Thuzad before everything opened because your guild decides as soon as Burning Crusade is announced uh, that they're going to stop raiding altogether, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so those are the sort of 10 things. I've sort of gone off on a bit of a tangent on a few of them that I do miss most about vanilla. And, you know, when it when these servers come out, and I think we're waiting a fair amount of time yet, um, I will potter about them. I have sort of said it's not going to be the thing I'm going to throw myself in. It's certainly not going to put pull me away from retail World of Warcraft, as you might call it, the modern version. Because uh, like I said, I, I played vanilla. I played all the aspects of vanilla. I've done vanilla. But there are things I miss about it, and just for the sake of nostalgia, if nothing else, it would be quite nice to start my paladin back up there. I even remember what it looked like. It looked like someone had beaten its face in with a door, actually, before uh, I eventually changed it when the, the updated graphics came in for the races. Um, but it is my first character. It's the first character I made and uh, that I still have now, uh, you know, all the way back then. So it'd be nice to make that again, uh, and I'll be looking forward to that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, comment, comment with your own experiences, all the things you miss most about vanilla. Or if you didn't play vanilla, the things that you're most looking forward to experiencing uh, when these servers come out. Uh, and also don't forget to subscribe for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.